Evening everybody, welcome to our YouTube channel, Nadia Sawala and family. I'm doing it officially. You're still too low. I'm low, I'm on a pillow. You're um, still tiny. We've lifted and we've raised and we've lowered. I'm gonna do that and just cut off the top of my forehead. That's better. Okay. Hello Claire. Hello everybody, hello. We are here to discuss the rather brilliant, and it really was brilliant, um, documentary that we've just seen on BBC Two with Adrian Childs called Drinkers Like Me. And good I'm, title. I wasn't expecting it to be as good or as moving as that, were you? I know well, you were very moved. I, I, before, I, you, before you worked with Adrian Childs and then he went on this strange journey of being sort of loved and then loathed, I always thought, I always thought it was very entertaining. He had that sort of gallows humour that, you know, football punditry people have you know he's always, so I, I mean like you you know him in a much more sort of intimate professional sense and, and I, mean, I, I those people might not know I did the um one, the one show. show I did the fir the pilot for the first month and Adrian Charles and I were um working and living together if you like because we're in the same hotel in Birmingham and I'm incredibly fond of Adrian we haven't kept in touch not for any other reason than that's our business sometimes. show business but I, but I'm ever so fond of him, and I, I really was quite upset watching it today, because I could just knowing Mark and knowing what he had to go through to get to a place of sobriety, I could just feel him with that struggle. What I was relieved about though was he's he's off. I mean, his character and his persona is gruff and 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 you know bluster and sort of quite male humour. It's very male sense of humour. And uh, I, I tell you what I was kind of pleased with from the outset was that he didn't go in with a sort of jaundiced eye about the whole thing. I thought he might have gone in with that slightly arch, still, you know, this isn't for me. But what I was kind of, I, I have to confess, I was moved to tears about three different times in it. And um, they were moments where I could see the honesty of his open-eyed worry and realisation and concern about his own drinking levels. So I found that really, really, you know, just just talking about Adrian Childs as a host. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought the way he, I thought the way he managed to paint a portrait of the way, I mean, I know he spoke to a lot of women, but the way men drink, men drink almost in, invisibly quickly. It, it, it's like, it's not even, a, it's a really hard thing to explain. That first scene where he was in the pub with his mates and they were off to see the West Bromwich Albion football game. I related to that so much because they were talking about, yeah, they were having to talk about drink, but it's almost, it was, for me, for the majority of my life, to have talked about what I was drinking would have been an inconceivable thought. Mm. I mean, inconceivable. I mean, I remember now in retrospect, there were many people that would come through my life, through work or whatever, who wouldn't have a drink. And I think they were absolute freaks. Well, that's what he was thinking. People not to be trusted. But I think you were probably quite a similar drinker to him because nobody could believe it when you went into the priory. Nobody, nobody could understand why he was. You, you oh. were like, well, it's not because you didn't come across as an al alco alcoholic. And I mean, at no point does Adrian say he's an alcoholic in this in this documentary, mm. but he's definitely. I mean, he's told by a um, therapist that he's alcohol dependent. Well, he had thirty two and a half units in one day. And your limit for the week is 14. Mm. So, um, I, I mean, I think that tells it all, really. Cameron, studies have shown women have caught up with men in terms of how much they drink in the UK recently. Absolutely. And also, interestingly, studies are showing that more and more middle-aged people are the problem. So yeah. it's, it's my generation, our generation are the problem, rather than um, young kids. But everyone well, he spoke to didn't think they had a problem, did they? Well, but that's the so nature. So for you, that must have been interesting. That's the well, it was disease. interesting, but there was no schadenfreude. I wasn't sitting there going, <laughs> no. little do you. I mean, there's no satisfaction in hearing people. I mean, I tell you what, there was a moment with Frank Skinner in this, and I really understood what Frank Skinner meant in one way. I didn't agree with his advice to Adrian in, in another, but, it, you know, I want everyone to be able to drink health to, to have a, a mean a good relationship with drinking for the buzz and the what did he describe it as the white glow or the 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 white the, jo hot white the joy hot white it? joy frank skinner described of alcohol one of the things that rarely gets said or doesn't get said enough is that for me alcohol worked for so many years mm. i had a great time i mean i had a truly truly brilliant time it made me confident i, I did amazing things I, I felt like I had remarkable times, you know, very creative moments were also sort of driven by and fueled by the, 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 the excitement of drinking, what have you. But I thought it was really interesting because 
when you hear other people talking about alcohol and you are a recovering alcoholic of 14 years, you do hear the very well-meaning lines that come out that are lines of denial or self-justification or usually comparison to others. The, the, the easiest way to push into the long grass the idea that you're an alcoholic is to compare yourself slightly to others. Well, that's what that's what Adrian Charles says, isn't he? He's always gone, oh, well. It was like he was sitting in the pub, wasn't he, with a couple of his mates, mm. his football mates, and they'd had three pints by half past ten or something. And then one of his mates was saying, oh, well, I know people that drink Sambuca. You know, th there's, there's this kind of drinking, then there's but that kind of drinking. And the thing is, I think that's what a lot of people do, isn't it? They surround themselves with people that drink more oh, than yeah, them always. so that they feel okay. But when he said that, I was a bit shocked when he said that four pints before half eleven. The only time I've ever drunk anywhere near approaching that before half eleven was if I was in an airport. Where yeah. all, all bets are off. I mean, I don't know if you get that, you know, the whole, the whole airport rules. It means you can drink at whatever bloody time it is. Yeah. But I used to remember getting excited about going to airports because you could drink whenever Everybody, without judgment. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was, uh, I thought it was interesting. It was a very interesting moment where he went to see, do you remember the famous Dr. Knott, who didn't he get discredited and, and thrown out because he was asking for the legalization of cannabis, Dr. Knott? Wasn't he? Oh, the, is that the, him? Yeah, that's him. Um, and he just briefly described his unit intake. Mm. And he looked absolutely horrified and shocked, didn't he? Yeah, he really was. He was I mean, you need to cut to. I mean, Dawn says it doesn't make you more confident at the very time you're drinking. The next day is the day that causes anxiousness and regret. And that's what Adrian talked a lot about, mm. didn't he? His anxiety, his depression. Mm. Of course, alcohol just makes all of that worse. If you drink it too much of it, if you drink, if you drink it moderately. Can you be addicted to something without being an alcoholic? Yeah, because that's what he and this other bloke were saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're addicted to alcohol, but we're not an alcoholic. What would you say? I don't know. What do you think? Well, Isn't it see, the same it's, thing? it's really hard. I think we're all addicted to many different things. I think the nature of being a human being is, is compulsive behaviour. I think... I thought, again, it was kind of interesting. At first, I thought Frank Skinner's advice... Frank Skinner's advice to Adrian Charles was... If you're not on the wrong side of the dark side, if you're not too far gone that you've reached the dark side, try and rein it in a little bit and maintain your, maintain your ability to have a drink because Frank Skinner can't. It's kind of a little... If you, if you unpack that a bit, it's a little bit like what I say to the girls. Don't drink too much so that you wreck your relationship with mm -hmm. alcohol. I think it's really important that mm -hmm. it's such a social lubricant mm. in all walks of life. Mm. Um, and yet, at the same time, there's a wonderful line that, that uh, Adrian said. He said, it's the only drug you have to apologise for not taking. That was a really good line, oh, though, that was wasn't a it? brilliant Going line. Going to a pub, sorry, I'm not sorry, drinking. Sorry, I'm not drinking. Friends, what's the matter with you? Go on, have a pint. That's and what... that's something I'd really wanted to discuss, and that really hit, that really struck me in the heart, actually. The shame. I feel, still to this day, I know people around me, the people who love me are all very sort of, you know, very supportive and very, you know, wow, you're 14 years. I feel shame. I feel massive amounts of shame around the fact that I can't drink at all. Because I feel like, and there's a moment where Adrian Charles gets into a lift and he says exactly the same thing. He says, what the hell was I playing at? What was I being, drinking all why that. was I being so stupid? Now, there are many times that I think, and I hear people, I've heard people on Loose Women, I hear people say this a lot that, you know, well, you were just greedy or you just can't control yourself. And, and I dovetail between thinking it's an illness and it's, it's brought about by other w issues in your life. And then are, there are other times where I, I feel deep shame about it. And I think, yeah, I just, I overindulged. Life with Louis just says, I think men who don't drink are classed as wimps. I don't drink and I've been called a wimp. Isn't that awful? Yeah. That's so awful. I know, for example, one of the reasons I set up my own production company was because in a, in a large way, I came out of rehab and I set up my company. I knew that I couldn't work within a broadcaster because the pressures within the broadcaster to continue work in the bar and drinking. Now, that's not to say anyone was specifically pressurizing me to drink, but I knew that I couldn't resist temptation just by sheer dint of the fact that one would have to be in social situations, drinking situations and drinking establishments so much. So it's been a major impact on most of my subsequent social life and professional life. What, what, you know the conversation, you know the conversation that, mm. that Adrian had with Frank Skinner? Yeah. So Adrian has discovered, if you haven't seen it, that he's like 80, 100 units a week, whatever. 
And he asked Frank Skinner, who's been a recovering alcoholic for 30 years. Yeah, 30 years. Yes. Um, what he thinks he should do. And Frank says what you just said, but what would you have said to him? If Adrian had been sat opposite you asking you, what would you have said? Well, it's difficult. It depends on what the question is. If someone's asking, I, I think everyone has the capacity to be an alcoholic. And I think everyone can have alcoholic periods in their life. And I think the crunch point comes at whether, I mean, I, I, here's my problem with it all. And it is a problem. And this is why one should be going to, I, I tell you one big omission that I was, I was really a bit disappointed by, not even a mention of Alcoholics Anonymous. Yes, there was the smart alcoholics kind of group chat, but there was absolutely no... Now, the only reason I don't, sub I don't subscribe to AA and I don't necessarily go enough, but I was disappointed because AA as an organisation has proven to rescue and help the, the, the vast majority of people from, mm. from alcoholism. So, you know, to ignore it is almost like to ignore, you know, a, a massive, massive part of the cure. And Darren, boy, I see there's lots of messages going up there about your alcoholic father and you being too scared to get drunk. Well, I'm not surprised, but there is a brilliant organisation, Adult Children of Alcoholics. Yeah. And, you know, I've seen quite a few of your messages going up and I think that, or al which is family and friends of alcoholics, would, would really help because there's a lot of pressure on the people around people that are the sort most, of lost in the drink. The most, going back to your question, the most dangerous thing about Frank Skinner's answer to... Um, I uh, thought Adrian was Adrian asking Childs. him to tell him to stop drinking. Well, I thought he was I calling out to stop I, drinking. I, I but, but for me, the biggest problem, the biggest struggle for me watching this programme was for, questions were running through my head like, could I drink and not, and control it? I've never tried it. I've never tried in 14 years to have a drink and just stay with one drink. I mean, I've, I've not tried it. So, you know, you get into a real existential kind of mess if you start to worry about what, what an alcoholic is. I think, I think if you know you have a dangerous relationship with alcohol, you have to make your own decision on whether you completely abstain or whether you try to control it. Well, I mean, he, he went to the doctor and they did this super duper scan thing on his liver and he was told that his liver was... Well, his well, liver... The fibre of his livers was starting to break down, I mean. Yeah. So... You would think that would be enough of an answer, wouldn't you? Hmm. So do you think it's that the definitions of alcoholism are too easy or that we're drinking too much? I mean, that's what, it, that's what the whole programme mm. led me to think. Did, it, did the programme have any eureka moments for you? Yeah, loads, because I just think... Well, I think a lot of people will have watched it and realised that they was bad, and a lot of people would have watched it and thought, my God, I really am a moderate drinker. When you're talking 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 units a week, that's unimaginable. But you always ask me what defines an alcoholic. What defines an alcoholic for you? Who are you asking? You, you. You're asking it really strange. Oh, no, 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 like, sorry. What to find an alcoholic? No, 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 no because... Like a weirdo. No, 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 because I'm like an alcoholic, a recovering <laughs> alcoholic, there's an assumption that I'm somehow an expert. I, d I don't know what the answer to that is, and I'm just curious... No, about I just wondered what... Being married to one and having been on the receiving end of one, if you like, what for you? Have, and you, you're very I conversant think it's for somebody. I think it's for somebody, I think, when it... It's like you can often tell when somebody's an alcoholic when they say something like... Oh, well, I do this and I do that and I don't do this and I don't do that and I'm not this all disgusting alcohol and I've only had this many and I didn't drink for a whole week and I didn't drink for the whole of January and I didn't drink... Because people that don't have a problem with drinking don't really talk about it or think about it like that. But we culturally have things like Stoptober, so that means the entire nation is, is struggling to control its drinking. Mm. Oh, I don't know. No? no. Um, I thought the most moving moment in the film was when he went to the therapist... I, I thought that, that was an incredibly, uh, and that that was where I was I was totally filling up. I mean, I I, I just couldn't mm. not with alcohol. So, I was filling up with. I really liked the shrink. I, I thought, thought the shrink was, a good was really shrink. meaningful. Yeah, it was very powerful. I, I I mean, I I just my heart went out to Adrian because you could see him having all these realizations, mm. couldn't you? And it was really interesting what he said. He goes, you know, I've been to so much therapy for my anxiety, for my depression, for whatever. He said, we have never once, in all the years I've been paying for it, ever talked about alcohol. Mm. And he said, and I suppose I've directed it. And a very wise woman said that to me once, Rachel. Mm. She said, you have to be really careful about going to shrinks if you are a very smart person, which Adrian definitely is. Because you can just drive, drive it how you want to drive oh, yeah, it, yeah, can't yeah. you? You can you dictate just terms. I mean... 
He, he, he probably never brought up the fact that he drinks 100 units a week. No. I mean, that's a very important sentence for no. any therapist, isn't and it? And also he revealed at this point that he was on the same antidepressant or anti-anxiety drug that I was on for a while, uh, citalopram. And then you begin to, you know, I thought it was nice the way we started to unpack that for everyone, usually alcohol or, a, a, you know, a dependency on alcohol or a misuse of alcohol or any, or any substance is attached to some other underlying issue or, you know, mm. and it, 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 you know, you can well imagine. I know for me, I've always felt anxious in social situations. And so what better than alcohol to, to, to get you through? And no surprise that without alcohol in my life, I find social situations incredibly difficult to contend with. Um, there was a really- I love what Zoe says there. Did you hear Adrian's mum saying she didn't believe in depression? Yes, we did, yes. Zoe. So we saw that and we saw his dad, joke, who's clearly yeah. got a problem with alcohol, joking about how life is just it's boring, boring without alcohol. <laughs> and you, you, you did make, we both looked at each other, didn't we? And thought, ooh, there might be yeah. some reasons there as to why he's such a drinker. I thought there was one really telling moment where I'd literally like to drag Adrian off to a coffee a coffee yeah. shop and have a chat with him about this. Because when he, when he was sitting in there, it wasn't a 12-step group, but it was like a therapy group. Um, and he said, oh, well, okay, but what if you stop and you do see the real you? Because they're saying, you know, this is the real you is what you'll see. Mm. And you don't like who the real you is. And that is a real problem because I think that's what I struggle with and that's why I've subsequently gone on to citalopram and gone on to various kinds of, you know, CBT. You know, the alcohol on the one hand helps with anxiety in dealing with others and getting into social situations and managing all of that. It also works a little bit like what I call the superhero drug. It, make, it fortifies you. It makes you feel like a much more amplified version of yourself. So... For, it's a deceit, but it makes you kind of like yourself more because you're you're more humorous, you're entertaining, you're the you're the raconteur. I was all those things. I was always the host. I'd have birthday parties with 40, 50 people. I would be able to social butterfly between them all because I was drinking infinitely more than most of them put together. And, you know, there is the problem. And there is a saying in, in sobriety, the great thing is you get your feelings back when you stop drinking. But the terrible thing is you get your feelings back. And I thought what was really amazing about this documentary was you could see the discomfort Adrian was feeling in getting his feelings back or certainly facing the feelings that he's been feeling all these years. And so I thought for me, that was when I was finding myself sort of quite deeply moved by it. It was, it was a very, as I say, um, non-Adrian Child's None of that sort of armour was up. Bravado. None of the armour was up. None of the sort of, you know, keep away and all my... And he didn't use humour to parry too much of it. Um, I thought Pamela that was refreshing. says there, because I know that you were told that, that by doctors you shouldn't even drink on Satellagram. Well, I was really pretty worried pretty when certain you were I was saying that. I'm, I don't, I don't, I I've hate seen to... that a lot. You know, I, I'm, you're not supposed to drink with Satellagram. Mm. And what about um, this? Three glasses of wine is considered a binge. That means we are a binge drinking nation, my well, God. I mean, I think they do say that. Yeah, so, I mean, I thought for me, it, it threw up a lot. Oh, well done, Walla Walla. What's Celebrated that? 30 months sober. Oh, well, well, well done. Well done. Yeah, well, one day at a time, and it always is one day at a time. But I have to say, it made me, whilst on the one hand, it kind of, I found it comforting. On the other, I found it, it really made me feel anxious watching this, because it made me think about, there were so many people in it who were trying to drink less so they mm. could drink. And I realise I've never done that. And I'm not suggesting for a minute I want to try it. But I felt a little bit like marked as even different to Adrian Charles. I felt jealous of him at the end that he could still go into that pub at the end and have a drink. But he looked so un. Happy. Well, you made an interesting point that he'll be slave to his app. Oh, he'll be you know, slave to that app now because he's him how much he has and because he's done. trying to keep to fourteen. They they kept, they sort of did a catch up with him two months after the documentary. He's trying to keep to fourteen units a week, but not managing it. Closer to twenty, but he'll be just thinking the whole. It's like it's like when you go on those diets where you have to count every calorie. Yeah. What happens? You don't free yourself yeah. from the problem that you have with food. It makes it worse because you just obsess all the time about Absolutely. what you can't have. Yeah, Janice, I did see myself <laughs> and Adrian watching this when I was socially drinking. And to be honest with you, he's the kind of guy I'd have had a great laugh with. Very intelligent, fun, mm. but, oh, but, but capable lovely. of being, being very silly. You know, I like silly and I like being intelligent and I like all of that. It just, you know, it, it's, it's the after effects. It's the waking up. It's the day in, day out. I could go out tonight and, and drink. I thought it was fascinating that there were these people drinking mindfully, mindful drinking. I mean, mm. I could see how that would be something I'd try if 
I discovered I was an alcoholic now and I was still drinking. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I kind of, I tell you what I'm jealous of. I thought that was a really what... good tip the woman gave. She said, go into a pub, if you're meeting somebody at a pub, and, for the f and just say to yourself, I'm going to have a drink, but I'm not going to have the first two drinks. I'm not going to have alcohol. alcohol. Mm. I'm just going to have um, yeah. a non-alcoholic drink. <clears throat> she said, then if you really want one after two drinks, you've proven to yourself that you can sit mm. there and not have a drink. She said, but what often happens is people by that time are getting pissed mm. and they've become a bit boring. Mm. And actually what you want to do is go home. But if you'd had those two drinks at the beginning, You're in. you'd have kept You're on skin drinking. skin in the game, as they say. Because, yeah, just to stay in the game. I thought that was really good. Yeah, no, it's a, it is good, tip, good, good tip. I mean, I suppose I am a bit jealous. I wish I could almost rewind back to when I was coming off alcohol to consider whether there was any other alternative route rather than complete abstinence. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's how the programme... Now, don't get me wrong, that's not me sort of finding a way to relapse. That's me just after 14 years. You do stop and you look at these things and I looked at everyone in it and I kind of understood where Frank Skinner was at. I, I kind of saw why he was like, no, you want to stay in that place because over it's here is so... I mean, it sounds ridiculous and I know I have the support and I don't know how I do it without the support of a family. But sometimes it feels so insurmountable. It, and, and seeing people being able to have one glass of wine or being able to drink mindfully or whatever, or Adrian being able to bring his, I, I just, part of me just wishes, could I have not found another way? So because I haven't found another way, I want all my children to drink responsibly. I don't want them to not drink. You know, so it, it, I thought it was a fascinating documentary. Really mm. fascinating documentary. It was really good. Mm. If you didn't see it, try and catch it because you'll get it on catch up. BBC iPlayer. And you know, yeah. big heart out to Adrian. Oh God, yeah. it was just yeah, you're just really brave to do it, and yeah. I just hope you end up feeling a bit happier. Yeah. And just don't drink because you then you won't feel so anxious. Absolutely. And um, please do subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you can always know when we're live, and please. Spread the word, tell all your friends. We really want to get to 10,000 subscribers. Well, if this is your first live, check out our channel. We've got movie reviews, we've got gardening films, we've got wellness films about depression, anxiety. We've got so much going on mm. on this channel and we really do appreciate every single subscription. Couple of comments. Yes, we're about to watch Sharp Objects now. Um, yes. And uh, if you're an alcoholic, do you need to avoid non-alcoholic beer? Interesting. Stud do, studies yeah. have shown most of the people who I was in rehab with who did go the non-alcoholic route nice. ended up returning to drinking. Really? Because it's means. too like it. It's too like it. But yeah. it's too like it, but it but doesn't, it doesn't the have kick. the follow-through. I think it, I would, yeah. yeah so yeah. you go searching for the follow-through. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Don't forget Thank to hit you. the subscribe button. Bye. Take care. Bye.